Hey guys, so again, I'm going to continue all the way through September. Every other day, you guys are going to get a high-level hero guide where I'm going to break down a competitive game and look at how the hero is played, what playstyle they're doing, and I like to teach everyone in a way of explaining the playstyle, the build, and then I like to go over the, how the playstyle changes over the course of the game. To keep myself incentivized to keep these going on, uh, I do have a sponsor for all of these videos, and today's sponsor is uh, Gino uh, Palette. Sorry, I always I keep thinking it's it's Gene Plate and it's Gino Palette, uh, but essentially it's just the this uh, group who has done a lot of research and found that. Um, the way we absorb different nutrients and the types of foods that we can take in uh, without any sort of issues is related to our genes. And they take those genes and they give you a diet plan that you can kind of choose from. It's not food that you have to buy from them. It's just a diet plan that tells you foods that work really well with your genetics. If you find yourself um, lacking energy here and there, it's usually diet related. Will this fix that problem? Maybe not, but it gives you a little bit of more of an understanding of what you should be looking for in your diet, which is really good um, because a lot of the issues that we have are because of our diet. Um, so that is the sponsor for this one. Feel free to check it out at the link down below and also you can save $20 by using the code not paradox all caps no spaces and that is the end of the ad read. So I, I say ad read like I'm reading it. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're gonna be looking at Ana. Uh, Dialer is running Ana this game and I love the the safe playstyle that Dialer plays checking bushes with Q making sure that uh, there's no one just waiting in a bush trying to blow up any of his uh, any of his targets. And uh, Dialer's really good at following up the targets with both a sleep dart as well as a biotic grenade. And Dialer's also really good at throwing out a, a sleep dart here and there just to see if he can't like set up a pick for his team. But the early portion of the game, Dialer is just there to pretty much keep everyone topped off. It's okay if he misses a few heals, but his early portion of the game is to top everyone off, and when they're all full health, to check a couple bushes to make sure that there's no, um, no one just waiting there trying to get any kills. Dialer doesn't really throw a lot of sleep darts and biotic grenades. I say that right as he throws a sleep dart, but generally doesn't throw a lot of sleep darts unless his team hasn't thrown an ability in a while. Then he'll throw a sleep dart to see if it lands, and then his whole team will follow that up as soon as possible. One thing that Dialer will sometimes do is we'll, he'll roam to the solo lane, top off the solo lane, and then come back down to bottom lane. Um, and in this case, he's, that's not exactly what he's doing. He's just helping out this top camp in case the, his team decides to commit to it. Um, but that is something that I will see Dialer do every once in a while on Ana. Since on Ana, there's not really much that you can do other than heal people in the er, first half of the game anyways. And then as the game gets going on a little bit longer, landing a good sleep dart is game changing. And that's something that we'll see a lot happen with on Dialer. Now, I talked about how... Hebby uh, in the video, is it good? Um, I talked about how Hebby is one of the best uh, Ana players in North America. Um, Dialer is surprisingly good. Now, Dialer is from a pretty random team, hasn't played a lot in the competitive scene uh, compared to some of the other players that they're playing against. If you, you can recognize almost every player on the enemy team as an old pro player. Um, Dialer, on the other hand, has not had as much experience as them, but is still a really, really good Ana player. So I wanted to show this particular game because I wanted to show how the playstyle shifts throughout the game and the talent choices that Dialer decides to go. Because I love that Dialer uses the sleep dart so much as not only a distraction to the enemy and set up for his team, but also as a follow up whenever there's slides going out, which is really effective in the build that he goes because he is going the sleep dart build. So he uses the sleep dart a lot for peels, but you're going to notice that as the game goes further on, he shifts it from being more randomized throwing sleep darts out to peel for his team or sleep darts to be there for a setup for his team. He uses it to follow up for slides a lot of times to give an extra 0.5 second stun because even if they're taking damage, they can't wake up in the first 0.5 seconds. So it's still very valuable to just throw it out as a follow up. It's kind of like a mini version of a Tyrande stun at that point. 
And so in the early portions of the game, he's throwing out sleep darts a lot to see if he can set up for a pick. But when the game gets a little bit later, he's using it more of a follow-up for his team. And it works quite often. Um, you also notice that he uses his, his Shrike right before he fires off his sleep dart every time. Then he'll oftentimes cancel his Shrike once everyone gets full health. And he'll start moving around a little bit more. You can see he throws out the, the E and then he immediately cancels it so that he can move around. His use of Shrike is something that I think we can all learn from a little bit. Because when there's fights going on, he likes to max range his Qs with Shrike. Whenever people start trying to flank, he'll turn off Shrike and immediately move with his team. And he also manually turns off Shrike before he mounts up. Mounting up does automatically turn off Shrike, but he manually turns it off just in case if something goes to interrupt him. He doesn't actually get interrupted, and he doesn't get... I mean, he won't get... He won't mount up, but he'll at least still have the Shrike removed. And it's a good habit to have, just because it's something that, worst case, you still have an answer. Once again, do you see how he starts slowly following up abilities more often? That's going to be very important as this game goes further on. So since I've talked about his playstyle in the early game of simply healing people, topping them off, and adjusting his strike usage, I'm going to talk about his build now. So he goes full E build, slumber shells, applying the uh, lowering the cooldown of your sleep dart by four seconds and applying a slow when they wake up. Then he goes overdose, um, applying four doses of your damage over time, which also heals you by a little bit. Um, it also makes it where your sleep dart will pierce all enemy heroes. Then he goes into night terrors. You gain 25% movement speed for 2 seconds for every hero hit by sleep dart. So if you hit 3 heroes or 4 heroes, uh, it could be up to 10 seconds of 25% movement speed. Upon waking up, the enemies take 10% of their maximum health. So if you combine these two talents, um, you can do a huge portion of the enemy health by just throwing that out and hitting something like Imperius and Anubrak at the same time and potentially a third person, you can do a huge amount of damage. When racing, you can see that he does uh, stutter step. He does get, or at least stutter steps when um, when there's things going on. He needs to reposition in a fight. And he does focus on racing quite a bit. Now, this next portion, they're probably going to have to defend. Um, the enemies do hit level 10s before them, so they need to be a little cautious about this next fight. So you're going to see that when he's cautious about fights, he stays really far back. And he max ranges his Q from really, really far back. And this is something that I've tended to do on uh, Ana for a long time, is I stay really far back in these fights. Um, when I pop my Shrike before fights start getting a little crazy, I'm really far back. And that's something that I wish more people would emulate. Um, they did remove 40% uh, of the healing because the enemy healer did end up taking Strangling Vines. Uh, it was annoying, but it actually didn't really make a difference in this particular situation. And he's able to keep everyone in the back line topped off, but the people in the front line start getting rather low. They were able to get one pick out of it and also stay alive from the Tracer. So this is going to give them a pretty good shot at re-entering this fight. And the enemies are still going to hit tens first, but they probably won't engage just because they're so far away. And so this next Immortal, you can see that Blue Team's Immortal was killed here. Um, and so Red Team did get an Immortal with a very small shield, but it is still a shield. Nano Boost is then picked up. They have a Chromie on their team. Now remember guys, uh, this video was from Method Madness. This was the playoffs. So this Chromie is before the mini rework that happened um, on, uh, what was it, August uh, 18th, this, August 19th, I think. Um, so it does not include those changes, but the nano boost on a Chromie is still a good idea and something that you want to do. One of the old strategies that I used to do when I would play Chromie before her like rework four times ago, um, when her W, when most of her damage was on her W and it didn't bounce three times, was I used to play with an Ana a lot, and when Sleep Dart landed, I would immediately nano boost a Chromie who would just drop a W and a Q and instantly kill whoever was slept. Um, and that still can potentially work, but it probably works a little bit better with uh, Li Ming now than it does with Chromie. So if you still want that playstyle, you can definitely still do it with uh, with Li Ming. You land a, a Sleep Dart, immediately land, nano boost the, the Li Ming, and she can do enough damage to just blow up whatever target. Look at how far back Dialer is from from the majority of the enemies. Just doing her best to keep the tank topped off. Oh, and that's a little unfortunate. 
Um, the timing was there to get that heal off, but it, there's still that travel time of the heal. I think if that that uh, trap didn't go off, he would have lived, but um, maybe he was just concerned that... Uh, or maybe he, he thought that the heal wasn't going to be showing up, so if he actually did the... Uh, the, the trap, then it would lock him down enough. I, I'm not 100% sure how they, uh, w what the the Chromie was thinking at that time, but um, either way, they still were able to take a good portion of that fort without really losing too much. They lost the ETC and took 90% of a fort. I think that's still a pretty favorable trade. Dialer's going to go for a quick E to see if it lands, and you're going to see him do that a lot. In between engages and in between fights, you'll see him just throw out an E just to see if it might land on a target. Um... And more often than not, it does actually land on a target. So it is something that's uh, pretty fun to see when he does land those uh, those crazy ones. I mean, I, I say more often than not, but uh, that's not actually true. They they miss those the crazy sleep darts miss nine out of ten at times, but that one time that it does land is pretty impactful. So, um, but yeah, that's uh. That's essentially the early to approaching the mid game. Now, let's we're, we'll, we'll talk about the the mid to late game once he picks his level 13 talent. Now, the level 13 talent on Ana is always situational. You look at the enemy team and you go, do they have more roots or do they have more slows? And which ones are more realistic to remove? And then at the same time, you if there's an equal amount of roots and slows, I value the armor over the 20% increase heal almost every time. So if there's an equal amount, I try to always take Smelling Salts, where if there's more favored for one or the other, you just take the one that's more favored. In this case, the Spear is a really powerful stun. Then Anubarak also has a lot of stuns, so I would probably be removing stuns this game by taking Smelling Salts. Even though they have a really powerful root and a powerful slow, I, I really think that that Smelling Salts is going to be much more impactful this game. You see, again, he's playing very far away, and he's just max ranging his Qs from as far as he possibly can. And he cancels Shrike right when this fight starts getting a little bit more mobile, and when his team starts reapproaching. The way that he takes Nano Boost is... He likes to nano boost mid fight. This is something different from a lot of the people who play uh, Chromie. They generally will nano boost more of a um, like at the start of a fight, and then your your mage throws all their abilities. But by nano boosting at the start of a fight, if the fight doesn't immediately happen, it's a waste of a nano boost. He likes to nano boost at the middle of a fight where the fight's been going for a little bit, and now you've got the ability to give a bit of mana to your mage and, and just reduce all those cooldowns to get one more quick shot. So he ends up throwing that nano boost out, doing a... I mean, Chromie did a decent amount there, but ultimately it wasn't that effective. I still think that's a really good approach to nano boost, but uh, it didn't really do much that that particular fight. Um, it might have zoned out the enemies, but I don't think it did much more than that. I think new Chromie, it'll definitely be scarier. He does end up taking Smelling Salts to remove the, the stuns and again give that 50 armor. If you can ever apply 50 armor to someone, um, there's almost no world that person dies, especially if you're playing someone who can do as much healing as Ana can do. Now, he's never going to be able to top the healing of a Malfurion who's going this build, but uh, he can definitely try. So we see Nick trying to pressure him in the back line, but again, he stays so far back that when Nick approaches, then you just have uh, Sessaboss just immediately start pressuring the, the Tracer with as much damage as possible. And now, again, just standing back, keeping everyone topped off, throwing out an E just to see if it lands, and going back to just healing. Now, the armor from the bunker is going to keep that Rainer up, but uh, the extra heals going out could potentially save um, the, the ETC. It doesn't. And I do think that he could be a little bit more cautious on Sleep Dart because he is going the Sleep Dart build. You see that he does throw it a lot during team fights. And it is kind of one of those things if you miss every shot that you don't take. And I think that's kind of what he's playing off is I would ra he would rather throw out the sleep dart like four times as often and miss it half the time um, rather than holding it for like minutes straight and never gaining any value out of it. Um, but he does miss quite a few. And if I was to actually give some advice to Dialer, I would say work on the sleep dart usage. 
Uh, he does get a little bit better at using it as a follow-up later in the game, but I think using it as a follow-up, even in the earlier portions, is still something that you can do and gain a huge amount of value. This game, they've only been barely ahead, but you got to remember the players they're going against. They're going against four major pro players and then a fifth competitive player. Um, and so these slight advantages that they're gaining and the, the play style that they're doing to play very safe, I mean, having an Ana survive this long against a Tracer Malfurion is incredible. And it's because he's playing so safe from so far away and he's repositioning. So I, I've mentioned this before, and let me bring out my crayons a little bit. Um, let me let me break off of uh, Ana for a second. When the enemies are moving in and out, you can see that this this blaze was moving in and out like this, forward and backward. And you can also see that the ETC was moving in and out, forward and backward like this. When he wanted to heal the blaze, he made sure that he was on the same path as the blaze was making it easier for him to land the heals then when he needed to heal the etc you could see that he moved over to this path and started healing the etc when the etc slid in he moved back to this path healing on on ana is only about i would say 50 percent aiming and 50 percent positioning positioning makes the heal so much easier to land and also makes it safer to heal and also makes it easier to land the the double heals um so he repositions to land these heals easier so it's kind of one of those ideas of work smarter and then work harder right and in that same sense that's exactly how how he's doing this let me see if i can break away from locked and then switch back to his camera so you can kind of see where he's looking in these fights um, he's always looking pretty far forward, um, and again, like, just max ranging his heals. Throws out a, uh, quick sleep dart to try to hit that Imperius, and giving his, um, his ETC a little bit more time to get out. Level 16, they are already looking to close out this game, and he ends up taking the Concentrated Doses. Now, the Concentrated Doses, in most scenarios, is not a very good talent. However, because he has the potential of applying multiple doses to huge amounts of their team with overdose, um, it makes it to where this could increase his healing by 70 or 80%. But generally, this talent isn't that good because you don't want to stand still near the enemies for a long period of time and apply doses with auto attacks. So people either go sharpshooter or active reload. Because he uses his Q to check bushes a lot, sharpshooter is kind of out of the question. And so his choices are either active reload or concentrated because he's taking so much poke damage from the Li Ming, he wanted that sustain healing rather than the burst so he goes with concentrated doses and if he ever lands an e um he can do a huge amount of healing by increasing his healing by um 40 even 80 percent if he hits one to two people with his e i mean potentially even more than that but right there there's the 40 percent and they end up using that to just close out the game doesn't get a lot of value off of that but you understand the purpose of why he took that talent early mid and late game he will max range his heals and that's a play style that you guys should be looking at he adjusts his positioning so it's easier to land a heal rather than trying to always just land a heal through aiming he throws sleep darts out like crazy in this build um where i think you should probably calculate it just a teeny bit more and as far as his w's he throws out his w's as if it's a follow-up like any other follow-up or he'll throw it to just get a little bit of extra heals but he was very conservative with his w usage and when he did use it it led to the kills that he needed to lead to and this is the game um, against, again, a bunch of pro players. This is a very safe playstyle of Ana, and this is a playstyle of Ana that I think a lot of people can replicate in their Storm League games. So I highly recommend it. One more time, I'm going to talk about the sponsor just for a second or two. Um, uh, Geno Palette. Man, I'm the worst with this. They're going to drop me so fast as a... As a uh, uh, content creator or whatever, Geno Palette. Make sure to try it out, guys. It's pretty cool. Um, at least check it out. See what the science is behind it, even if you don't actually buy into their their program. It's it's pretty neat. So make sure to check out their website with the link down below. If you do purchase anything, use my coupon code. Not paradox. Save yourself twenty bucks. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, make sure to subscribe. Hit the bell so you can continue seeing all of my videos that come out. Remember, I'm doing this high level 
hero guides all through september um september should be over by now not not over but getting close to being over as i'm closing down the the rest of this last week i'd imagine i don't know again i'm scheduling these so i don't actually know how far into september we we are with a lot of these and i don't know what order i'm publishing these but um either way thank you guys so much for sticking around for this and make sure to check out some of my other videos